drivers in the front row that are fighting for the regular season championship. Two drivers that are even in contention for the playoffs in three and fourth. And two drivers in ninth and 10th are holding to keep their position into the playoffs. With two races to go. <coughs> with two races to go here in the Calder Park Thunderdome. Let's get underway. Martin and Fontaine will lead us off. We have the 95 of size of the 10 of Dustin Morton Jr. who are in 11th and 12th, the worst possible positions you can start in. They're going to need a miracle <coughs> if they want to get back up into the playoff spot after this. Same with the 96 of Kronberg that was very poor in qualifying, as well as the 7 of Sad and the 52. A lot of drivers who do not want to be in the right spot, if unless a miracle happens, they're going to need a miracle in the next race. If they want to get into the play, if they want to get into the chase. But meanwhile, it's Levante Martin who takes lap one, and there are three wide coming out of turn two. Here's Luis Fontaine, Raiderson alongside Jeremy Cottle. Fontaine is fighting for the regular season championship. It would have to get past Kromberg, Ross, and his partner in crime, Levante Martin, to do so. But Martin seems to be home free at the moment. He will take lap two. LGD is a, LGD is in the fifth spot. He's relatively comfortable. But, he's, but his journey is far from over. He finished second place back in Season 3. He's going to want another shot at the title. He's one of the only three drivers to have won multiple races this season. The other one you see right there is the 9 of Logan Davenport. Well, the car won, twi won twice. It was Baker who won both those races. But Davenport wants to prove that he is just as worthy of driving that 9 car. Three wide coming down the front stretch. And you got the 22 of Torres who isn't even in contention. He's 32nd in points, but is doing very good at the moment. Into the wall. And it looks like Fontaine and Huckleberry might have touched there, but they seem to be doing pretty fine. Three wide, and this might not end well. Fontaine and Connell touch, and they're going to slam into Huckleberry. Fontaine goes into Edgewater. A lot of drivers try to dodge it, but it looks like Connell and Fontaine were the front runners got hit. Cottle is an in contention. Fontaine should still comfortably get into the playoffs, but that is a horrible crash for most of the, for the main drivers who are involved. Edgewater wasn't really in contention anyway, so it seems to be at the moment that crash was relatively insignificant. Oh, we have another crash going up. The Max saved it. Max saved it. Amina is getting very aggressive. And look at this, 4-1 coming down, that's not going to end pretty. And there's Davenport who goes down. Oh my goodness. Logan Davenport got absolutely slammed and Crombert's in it as well. Ross is in it as well, that would be good news for Martin. But oh my goodness. That is, hor that is horrible, I'm surprised all the cars made out fine. And there is Sides right across the start and finish line who was completely crashed as well. All started Max getting into Boyd, who gets into Davenport. Davenport forces himself into the wall. A very good job from Stevenson and Hopkins to dodge that damage. But Davenport hard into the wall. He flips over, and that's just the beginning of a hit. He his car actually lands on top of Jackie Everett's. And we can see that we're about to have another wreck here. Lamarty saves it, and Bolio Brown has nothing he can do about that. Hits Davenport hard onto the side. Bolio Brown, both of the Browns, Bolio and Topis get in it. Now let's see what happened to the 95 and what caused this driver to flip. Well, not flip, but finish DN after across the starting finish line. There's the 95 right there. Looks like he just got he just got into Huckleberry and there was nothing he could do. With his car is just stalled. Looks like Ross got heavily involved in that as well. And this is just a huge, huge wreck. I now Martin and Mina are side by side, and Mina gets it to Martin. Mina and Martin into the wall, and Mina flips, flips over Torres, and Martin saves it. And Mina is getting absolutely destroyed as well. Are there any drivers that have even made it? Huge break for the 52 of Salter by mir in an absolute miracle dodging both wrecks. You want to call this instant karma or what? But Mide goes into the wall, flips a couple of times, and lands it. But look at Martin. As we can see, let's get a view from Martin if we can. Martin actually saves it. The only thing he really has to worry about is worn out tires, not having to worry about any car hitting him. 
he could still very well finish on the lead lap if he could keep his car going. Eden, look who the leader is, Luis Gustavo de Marza. He's the only car that really hasn't had to deal with any damage. Stevenson and Hopkins did a good job at dodging it, and the 21 of Cali Johnson as well. Jay Salter got a really, really huge break there as he was able to dodge both wrecks. If LGD can get a third win here, it won't put him ahead of Martin into the standings, but it would give him a pretty, pretty big boost as if Martin and Ross, can, and even if Martin gets wins the regular season championship, him and LGD will be tied on points because the regular season champion gets another win. So it's very important that the aid of LGD holds on. What kind of repairs are they going to make? You can see that Martin, who's a lap down, he pinned on a lap 10, he's going to stay. But it's LGD, Stevenson, and Callie Johnson who will lead us off. This is a very important race for Stevenson as well. And for Hopkins if they want to stay into that into those chase spots. Let's see what kind of tires these drivers are taking. LGD is into his stall. It looks like he's going to do... See, because these cars are right turning only... It's very hard if you want to get the car to be turning right, but it looks like LGD is taking right turns only for the sake of the grip. And he's going to be out of there, and Stevenson is going to be out of there as well. LGD, Stevenson, and Johnson are your top three. To go here for LGD, Stevenson is almost four seconds behind. The 21 of Callie Johnson is racing alongside Opsal. The 83 of Hopkins is in fourth, Lamarty in fifth. This would be a very, very impactful race for both LGD and for Stevenson. LGD because if Martin doesn't win Bahrain, he will tie with Martin with the most with the most points going into the postseason. And for Stevenson because this would basically seal his spot into the chase. The fastest lap also goes to Stevenson, but he's going to get a five-point bonus it looks like. LGD and Stevenson just have to stay calm. No significant threats ahead or behind them. Who would have thought that? Who would have thought that Mason Dixon Motorsports is really having a pretty good season? Kronberg is pretty much in it. The 56 of Dorian Sparks is in six, is doing pretty good for a rookie. And it looks like Roger Stevenson is going to practically seal his way into the chase as well. Two more laps for LGD and for Stevenson. The 21 of Callie Johnson isn't in contention, but this would be a very good drive for him as well. Especially his teammate Jackie Everett is going to be replaced by, most likely by Dustin Keyes going into the next season. So Johnson will still have another partner for Blue Cheese Racing. But enough about that for now. You can see that Martin has worked Martin, because of being able to save that spin, has worked himself back into the, I believe the 11th position, yes he is. But we're actually telling now that Martin is very, very low on fuel and he's going to have no choice but to save. He didn't get any gas going into the pit, so he's going to he's going to have to very much save if he wants to finish in the top 10 or even just finish the race. But it's going to be one lap to go. Let's get back to our winner. Two turns to go for Luis Gustavo de Marza, and what a win this is going to be. He's going to be the first driver to win three times this season. Stevenson, second place finish, and his fastest lap bonus will practically seal him into the chase. And let's see what's going on with Martin here. Yeah, you can see there that Martin is ran out, has ran out of fuel, but can he make it? He's going 85 miles per hour right now. I think he can. He's just hoping to finish on the lead lap. Huckleberry and Max pass him. Is there going to be another car that passes him? It doesn't look like it. The race is complete. LGD goes into the pits. Martin downshifts, and he is, looks like he's going to finish in 16th, the last car on the lead lap. He's going 12 miles per hour, but it will be enough to finish as the last car on the lead lap. What a pretty good job for Martin. Very good job from Stevenson and a very good job from LGD.